Uh, this is the oil filter. Mechanically, why is your sound? I'm going to go about 380. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Living Life Fast. So previously, you would have seen me take my M3 to a Volvo Automotive, where I had the car checked over before my first ever track day. So by checking it over, we made sure to give the car a nice service. So we changed all the fluids and all the filters. We put it up on the ramp to make sure the car was all straight. There was no knocks. And just so that the car was in perfect working order for my first track day. So some of you are probably wondering why I'm not on track already. And the reason is because I went to book, but it was fully booked at Brands Hatch, which is the track I want to go to. Um, the next available dates, I think, are the 25th or the 26th, which I'm about to book. But before I do, um, I was actually reading a lot of comments on the YouTube video, some of my Instagram posts, and even some advice from Imran. And um, one of the things that kept popping up are brakes. And uh, one comment I read in particular said, don't make the brakes be the reason your day's ruined. Like, you know, because I do want to be on track. I don't want to be worrying about things failing on me. And uh, apparently if you're an aggressive driver or just not even aggressive driver, just, you know, depend on how long you're on track, the brakes can fade quite a lot. You can even cook your fluid on the M3. So like I said, I don't mean the brakes are bad. It's just that they're not up for, you know, hard track use. And that's what I plan to do. I want to set a good lap time. So. Uh, basically, yeah, we're back on our way to Evolve Automotive and we're going to install a stage one brake upgrade. So, catch up with you guys in a minute. What are you saying, man? Right? Yeah, Good. man. Back for round two. Back again, man. More, 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 more. Eric, what are you saying, Imran? Good, right? man. Good. Good to see you again. Again, yeah, man. Do so, like a <laughs> <laughs> so I'm filming on my iPhone, iPhone, Samsung Note 8. So maybe look, yeah, looking a bit different. He's using his phone. Yeah. <laughs> in case people don't believe me. Yes, exactly. So yeah, um, I mentioned earlier that obviously I booked a track day. Yeah. Because obviously we wanted to take the car in stock form. I wanted to take it. Yeah. In stock form, but now I'm thinking I don't want the brakes to sort of let me down. So yeah, well I did say to you that you, you said yeah. your track day wouldn't last very long if you mm. were to stop brakes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like a mild up brake upgrade. So we're going to keep the standard discs. Yeah. Uh, we've got some performance friction Z rated pads front and rear. Okay. Uh, some Goodridge stainless hoses, and we've got some DOT 5.1 Paget fluid. Okay. So I'll go through what each of those does and why it's a good idea to change them. Mm -hmm. and the discs on the E92 M3 are actually pretty good from factory, yeah. so you don't necessarily need to change those. Uh, the performance fiction pads, the reason we use these are is that they've got really sort of low noise, low dust, but they perform really well. Uh, we used to use uh, Fredo DS2 500s, but we found these to be um, better in terms of noise and dust, but they actually outperform them as well. So okay. we've been using performance friction for the last five years, All right. so they're pretty good. Uh, the hoses, the stock ones are a rubber so they can perish and they can expand when they get under heat and pressure. So, uh, so these the Goodridge are the... ones are stainless steel. Okay, so it's more just for reliability than braking? Yes, yeah, they don't help with your braking, but okay. they improve the sort of pedal feel. And, it's more and efficient. It's, yeah, it's more they, efficient they don't, they're not going to break or you okay. know, burst under pressure. And then yeah. we've got um, the Paget Dot 5.1 fluid, which has a higher boiling point. Okay, so you want to cook them? Yeah, so you won't get that sort of mushy feeling on the mm. on the pad when the fluid boils. So what is this going to do? What you know? How is it going to feel on track then? What does it allow for me to basically stay, stay on track longer? Basically, yes, yeah, it allows you to stay on track for longer, brake for longer, and your braking performance will actually be improved as well. Okay. So yeah, all round. And is it is it the, would these pads like last the session and I'll be able to drive home? I ain't got to change them out or you should last the session. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Wicked man.
Oh, is this the brake fluid? Yeah, yeah brake fluid reservoir. So we'll take the cap off yeah. and then suck out all the old fluid. Okay. And then top up with a new fluid. One thing you don't want to do is let your reservoir run dry when you're doing a brake fluid change. Okay. Because if it runs dry, you get a lot of air in the system. Yeah. And that's what you're trying to prevent. So when you bleed the system, mm. you bleed out the brakes from each caliper. That's when you remove the old fluid <clears throat> and then the new fluid runs through, also removes all the air in the lines. Um, so yeah, you're constantly topping the fluid level up while you're draining it out of the, out of the caliper. Silky beat. So what are the pads actually saying and the discs? What would you say the condition yeah, I mean, is? The, the discs are in pretty good condition. You've got very slight lip on the top, but it's not... Nothing too too much to worry about. So discs are fine because someone did mention about um, putting pads on a good disc. You don't want to put them on a bad yeah, condition. Yeah, you don't disc, want to do put you? pads on a bad disc because um, you end up wearing the pad to the shape of the disc. Then all right. <clears throat> and then if the disc is bad, then it makes the pad bad. How often should you change your discs, just in general? Um, it depends on how you drive. It's, it's hard to put a lifetime on pads and discs. Um, generally, depending on the quality of the disc, you probably get two sometimes three sets of pads out of one disc but the problem with the disc is they start getting really thin when they get too old and <clears throat> too worn in in foul in miles what is that though miles again it generally depends on how you drive um, okay. if you're driving everywhere foot flat and then you hammer the brakes on they're only gonna last a few hundred miles what size spaces did you run on here i didn't actually know that it had spaces on it you didn't no. you didn't put them on no oh there you go then man you got free modification you got <laughs> you got spaces all around that you didn't even know about what, what, what are they uh they're t a bit worn man you got tpis so it's good quality one anyway wow um 15s on the front tpis again on the back yeah it's got spaces yeah tpi yeah, that's yeah. something i was going to do as well on the car yeah, TPI spaces. Spaces. good spaces Black magic. Black magic, yeah? Black magic. What's it for? It's um, basically chews away at rust and stuff. All right. It just um, cleans it all up, makes it a bit easier to undo. So I just put some on the brake lines just to cool. assist them up a bit so they don't seize up when I'm trying to undo them. That black magic, yeah? That black magic. <laughs> My car just looks bad on camera, man. Look at these marks on there. It looks battered. Camera brings out the worst, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll give that as my excuse. If everyone's like, why does he look so ugly on camera? I'll be like, oh, it's just the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the caliper, yeah. And that's your old line. Okay, they're the old ones, yeah. That's your old one, and this is the new Goodrich one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Obviously, same length. Mm. But these ones are stainless still, these yeah? These ones are stainless, yeah. So they, got, they don't um, swell. When you put your foot on the pedal, obviously the brake fluid runs through here. You get the pressure in there. Yeah. Once it builds up pressure, these start to swell up. Oh, the right. The original ones. The originals, yeah. Um, not like like a balloon, but they swell a bit more. So it takes a lot longer for the pressure to build up to push the piston. Okay. Um, so with these, there's no pressure. They're yeah, not too heavy either, to be fair. Little update. Um, yeah, That's so um, fronts are pretty much done. Yeah. Um, both, pad both sets of pads are in. Both lines are on. Okay. All we're going to do is connect this line to the caliper. Yeah. Um, put the retaining clip on and then we'll move on to the back one to the rear yeah yeah similar yeah. process any yeah, difference similar. they're pretty much the same thing um yeah. just two two fixings in the back yeah um that holds the caliper to the carrier and then the line pretty much the same process Brake pads, yeah, yeah, this is the old rear ones. Mm. Like I said earlier, you've got, still got a lot left on them. Yeah. Um, but what I noticed when I was taking them off is their textile. So they're not Textile, even, what does that mean? It's basically, it's, it's one of the lower end. Oh, um, that's the company name brake, on them, that's yeah? That's the maker, yeah, that's who make the brakes. Mm. Um, obviously, they work as brakes should. They're not, like, completely dud. Yeah. Um, but they're, like, a lower end aftermarket okay. replacement. So they're not even BMW standard. Yeah, so they're, they're a bit lower than BMW standard. So... Um, 
the jump from these to the performance friction pads will be a yeah. lot higher than it would have been even from BMW to the performance friction one. Okay. So you'll notice a hell of a big difference when you're braking. Wicked. Those compared, combined with the, the lines and the fluid, mm. it's going to be like, you, you you probably put yourself at a windscreen. <laughs> be <laughs> careful, man. They're going to be, they'll be, they'll be sharp. Connect that to the bleed nipple on the caliper. Yeah. And then... So you're going to do that while I pump the Yeah, I'll, pedal, I'll yeah. do that and then I'll get you to pump the pedal and then you just watch this clear bit. Yeah. And once you can't see any bubbles in the clear part, yeah. then you know that it's just fluid coming through. I mean, this is just one that I made up. You can buy proper kits. So you want me to jump in and yeah. pump the brake, yeah? Yeah, please <laughs> Levels to this shit, bruh. Level. I'm on level 10, you're on level 1. <laughs> These better from the top, bro. Bro, I just killed the game. Short ones, yeah? Yeah, just short ones. Pump it like up. that? Yeah, just keep pumping them up. That's like hard now. It's not hard, yeah? Yeah. I told you this conversation was going to get dirty. <laughs> I told you, man. Oh, shit. It's terrible. Why are you trying to join me at the top? <laughs> So what are you saying, Aston, we finished? Yeah, all done, man. All um, done, we've yeah. We've got the performance friction pads in. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the good rich lines in. Um, we've got the padded 5.1 fluid in. Um, it's all bled up, all the airs out system. On. A any go. precautions I should take, like bedding the brakes uh, in? Yeah, uh, first couple hundred miles, just take it easy. Yeah. Um, try not to brake hard unless you have to. Okay. Uh, just easy braking. The, it gives some time, the pads time to bed in. Mm -hmm. Should I try to avoid stamping on the brakes then? Yeah, if you can. If, if you can, have to, yeah. if a kid runs out in front of you or something, you've got to hit the brakes. Yeah, the brakes. yeah But if you yeah. can, if you can avoid it, then avoid it. Once you've been tracked and tested it out, yeah. the next thing is to get the power to go over the brakes. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, nice um, seeing you again, Aston. Yeah, I'm too, sure man. that so it won't be the last. Yeah, no, nah, it's not mm. going to be last time. So. <laughs> so yeah, all right, man. I'll see you soon then. Cool. See you again, see man. You. Take care. <laughs> Yeah, that's the brake upgrade on the car. So obviously, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there was uh, quite a few comments about brakes, and I thought, you know what, brakes would definitely be, definitely be worth upgrading before the track day. So, uh, I mean, I would love to be able to show you guys what the brakes are like now. Obviously, as to mention, the brakes need bedding in for a few hundred miles. And uh, my initial feel, the initial feel on the brakes right now, they don't feel great. I'm gonna be like deadly honest with you. It just feels quite spongy uh, Aston said this is why it may feel a little bit spongy but definitely the opposite to how I normally upgrade a car I mean I've never upgraded brakes on a car in my life I mean it's always just been stage one tune induction intercoolers and stuff like that but obviously for project m3 it's a bit different because obviously we're focusing more on track racing I don't know how many times I'm gonna go on track as well guys to be honest so um, definitely gonna be on track uh, next week or two and I will announce a date on my Instagram, so follow me on Instagram if you want to know when I'm going on track. So if any of you guys want to join me, uh, or any of you like, want to come on track or just watch, um, like I say, follow me on Instagram. I'll leave the link in the description now. And um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Definitely some fun stuff happening on Living Life Fast. Right, so I'm going to end the video there. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Bye.